Good afternoon and welcome to another Phoenix webinar. My name is Tamara and my guest today is uh, our Croatian Swedish financial blogger Tony Vitali. Tony, hi. Hi Tamara, thank you uh, thank you for inviting me and it's nice to be here again. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic, um, which uh, nowadays is, I think, uh, one of the topics that we <laughs> often discuss as we get a lot of questions from our clients uh, regarding investing at all-time highs. Yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, interesting topic and it's uh, related to the current events. Uh, the markets are doing uh, really well. Uh, for the last, uh, I would say, the whole of 2023, basically, and uh, especially the start of 2024. So, yeah, it's a, it's a question that uh, I, I often get uh, these days. It uh, seems to me as if people were kind of uh, caught off guard. They kind of thought that, you know, the good times are not going to come <laughs> uh, maybe uh, in such a short uh, uh, let's say, period, because we were discussing high interest rates, you know, where the economies will go. But uh, it turns out, you know, uh, markets are again at all time highs. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there were uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of discussions about a potential uh, recession coming in 2023 or even early 2024. And as uh, we can tell, it didn't happen. So I think that's uh, also another reason why uh, we should invest uh, no matter what, uh, no matter what are the expectations, no matter what uh, uh, the financial analysts say. So yeah, I think this uh, past year has been a good example of that. Yes, it exactly proves what uh, we usually talk to people about and we tell them that, you know, we don't have a crystal ball and it's really tough to know what's coming. and. Uh, in a way, this is a positive surprise for many people. But now there is this issue, you know, shall I invest because uh, the markets are so high? When <laughs> markets are low, people are scared to invest because they are low. When they are high, they are scared to invest because they are high. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the the psychology is always a big factor uh, in investing. You know, um, it, it is said that the markets are driven by both uh, fear and greed, you know, and the different uh, uh, parts of the, the investment specter. But uh, in the end, I think it's best to look at the data. So that's exactly what are we going to do today to uh, make our decision? Is it is it a good idea to invest at all time highs or not? Yes, um, I, I think uh, in a way, uh, uh, let's start by looking at um, this graph. I find it this chart uh, interesting. Actually, it can tell us a few things. Uh, for this particular example, I took the MSCI World Index. Uh, often we speak about S&P and we'll uh, talk about it a little bit later. But um, what do you say about this chart? <laughs> Yeah, first of all, uh, I would like to point out that uh, it's a logarithmic scale. So if you look on, on the left, you can see that the distance between 1 and 10 is the same as between uh, 10 and 100. So uh, we, we have to be aware that uh, this chart in reality uh, uh, looks uh, like the uh, the regular, let's say, compound interest chart over a long time. So uh, the the growth is exponential, not not linear as it may seem. So it's much, much, much greater yes. th than it seems. But it had to be this way because uh, otherwise it wouldn't fit on the chart. Fit in the screen, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in a way, it's actually good now that you pointed out. It's good to have a look, uh, you know, to to just see how long it took from one to 10 and then, you know, the rest, <laughs> 10 exactly. times more, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Really, really good point. I mean, uh, if we look at the chart, uh, we can see that the time that it took from one to ten is almost the same. It's a little bit longer than uh, the the other part from from ten to a hundred. But uh, uh, yeah, that just shows us the power of the of the compound interest, especially over long periods of time. And here uh, we have the um, very well known uh, world index. So it's not just the the American market, which is usually uh, taken taken into account in these calculations but we can see that the global market has uh, showed a very steady growth over a long period of time of course uh, there are some bumps uh, in the road but uh, the more you zoom out the more you look at the the big picture those those bumps uh, look almost uh, negligible 
Yes, I did it on purpose, actually. This is why I put this particular chart here, because I wanted to show that uh, very often we speak about the S&P 500 as a really good performer, right? But I wanted to point out that uh, we always talk about uh, diversification. So I wanted to point out and uh, uh, to people that basically the whole world is you know, always going uh, in a way in a positive uh, direction, and that uh, we can see that on uh, this world index as well. Yeah, exactly. That's also my personal investment philosophy. Um, I believe in in global diversification, even though the the U.S. market is the most well established and the biggest, and uh, it really had a really good returns for over a long period of time. But I'm I'm still fan of diversifying uh, investments even more. So yeah, we we can see that uh, over the long term, uh, due to various factors like other economies advancing, enhancing. Uh, productivity, etc. Some stuff that we're going to talk about later, uh, sooner or later, that growth in economy is going to translate to growth on the financial markets. Yes. And then the good thing is to see here, at, uh, for example, at this long period of time, uh, looking at it, uh, you know, that basically all the regions in the world you know, <laughs> have gone further than they were before. So in a way, uh, that tells us that uh, when we diversify, no matter uh, what happens in one particular region or whatever, uh, we are going to be fine. Exactly. Some regions did better, some regions did worse. But uh, uh, it's interesting also to note that uh, the periods of outperformance uh, also interchange. So uh, we all know about the last decade in 2000s where the, the American market uh, survived two crises and basically had almost zero growth for a 10 year period. But some other global markets did really well. So uh, we just don't know which which market is going to outperform in the next 10 years or the next 20 years. So that's why it's also a good idea to uh, to invest globally. Yes, so going back to something that you mentioned uh, earlier on is uh, that, you know, when markets race, let's say, from one high point to the next, uh, investors face uh, this psychological barrier to entry the market. Um, it is the time when they question whether it's best time to put their money in the market or not. And uh basically thinking, you know, the thought behind it is that investing at all-time highs means that they are paying a price that no one has ever paid before, right? Which, uh, in a way, is creating uh, a kind of, uh, you know, recipe for regret in people. So um, this is why uh, I wanted to show the next chart, uh, because this kind of thinking is linked to trying to time the market. And it's a, a topic that we always discuss. and. Uh, we talk about passive investors versus active investors and how much basically uh, better perform, how, how much better perform uh, performance we see in um, passive investment because of this. But as you said, psychologically, people tend to time the market and exactly the opposite, what they need to do. So um, as I said, I wanted to uh, show this next chart. Basically, um, you know, uh, showing that, as we can see, uh, all-time highs by decades are uh, happening pretty often, as we can see, and um, they are very common. So, um, missing out uh, on investing in uh, all-time highs would, in a way, um, mean that we are missing out. Uh, a lot of uh, investment and uh, uh, in the in the long run it's not really something that uh, will will pay off yeah exactly um, I mean uh, this data is is again uh, now for uh, the American index uh, S&P 500 so it's not uh, all, all of the global data but yes. uh, it really paints the the point which I mentioned earlier like the the 2000s uh, we can see here for example is an outlier where uh, there were only 13 uh, all-time highs so that's also an, another another good uh, argument uh, for uh, global investing but even if, if we invested only in in the american markets in the s&p 500 if we invested for the long term we can see that uh, 
yeah, it doesn't matter so much at, at which time did uh, did we buy, did we start uh, investing. I think we all heard at one point in our lives uh, the the old saying buy low, sell high, but I don't think that translates for uh, long term passive investing. I think that's that's more of a mantra in uh, active short term investing. Um, so, yeah, in long story short, in, in passive investing, I don't think uh, the timing of, of starting and investing is as important uh, as people think. Yes, I mean, this whole uh, verbiage of, you know, all time highs is, I think, psychological. So uh, basically what we want to show here is that new market highs are not as meaningful as some people may think. You know, often they have to do with continued growth of the economy and corporate profits, like you said. So uh, while there are always going to be periods of time when the economy and markets slow down, over time, improvements in productivity and innovation um, have continued to propel markets towards new highs. And uh, this can basically generate uh, strong long-term results for investors uh, if they stay invested. And this is the main point, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you also have to take into account uh, the momentum of, of the market. So uh, a lot of times uh, when the markets are good, they're really good. So you have a new all time highs almost every other day, as we, we've seen uh, now in 2024. So you could ask uh, the same question. Is it a good to invest at all, at all time highs, you know, a couple of months ago, then again, a month ago, then again, a couple of weeks ago. And we still don't know if if the markets are at uh, the, the, the high for this year yet or, or not. So we don't we just don't know and we have to do the best we can with the information that we have at hand yes and uh, that's where we always say that predicting future is very difficult we can see the trends we can try to uh, read into what uh, macroeconomical uh, data are uh, telling us uh, in many ways but uh, as we see uh, we often see situations like it's been in the past couple of years that you know uh, we have high interest rates, but we have uh, low unemployment at the moment and all sorts of things that uh, we might not have uh, in a way um, had before. So um, the markets are maybe not reacting the way uh, people were pred predicting them to react. Yeah, exactly. And I really like uh, this slide as well, because uh, it uh, reiterates some of the stuff we've been talking about and uh, basically just... Uh, all comes down to value. Uh, I mean, when you are uh, passive investing, you are looking at the value of, of uh, all the stocks and bonds that you are buying. You shouldn't necessarily focus on the uh, on the price, uh, which is um, at a certain point uh, in, in a certain period of time. So uh, in the end, you have to be aware that uh, you are buying a, a very very wide uh, variety of different uh, stocks and bonds that are inevitably uh, going to be valued more at some point in the future. So we just don't know about uh, the, the short term. Yes, I mean, the bottom line, which is very, <laughs> in a way, uh, simple, is that when you're buying the whole basket, you know, one or two don't really make a difference. So this is why we don't need to really time anything because we are not buying one we are buying the whole basket so yes. exactly yeah and another factor that we maybe didn't mention is uh, um, a, a lot of people coming out of uh, poverty in modern times that's a trend that has been going on for decades and i read just the other day that only this year it's going to be more than 100 million people uh, rising from poverty going into uh, the middle global class so all those new uh, uh, customers let's say uh, uh, all those people participating in the economy all of them are, are going to be buying uh, products and services from the companies listed on the stock market and then that trend is has been here now for decades and there's no uh, uh, there's no end uh, in sight so uh, yeah sooner or later that's going to translate uh, also to to higher uh, prices on on the markets I think this uh, basically next slide will also help us uh, uh, in a way explain uh, maybe with some numbers how it actually uh, looks like. Um, do you want to? Uh... Yeah, sure. Um, I think this this uh, graph and maybe the, the next one as well that we're going to see are the ones that are most telling about should uh, we invest at all time highs or not. 
so basically, if we look at the first two columns, uh, we have the average uh, one year returns uh, in the blue uh, only after all time highs and uh, in the yellow at all, the, all other dates. Uh, so we can see that uh, if we invest at all time highs, our uh, future one year returns are somewhat lower than at all other dates. So. 1.4% lower, but we still they are uh, pretty good, right? 11% is is nothing to laugh at. I mean, this again, this is the data for uh, S and P 500, as we can see uh, below the graph. But uh, if you look maybe at some uh, longer time periods, uh, three years, five years, then I think we're gonna uh, see some data about market corrections on, on the next graph for even longer time periods. Uh, the difference is uh, not as big as as for the one year returns. So the moral of the story is that uh, yes, if we invest at all time highs, on average we're gonna get slightly lower returns, but it's the difference I don't think is uh, nearly as close as people like to think. And uh, also, yeah, uh, I think the moral of the story is to is if we invest at any single point in time we are probably going to do pretty good yes i think what is also important here to point out is uh, if you look at the dates so this is basically a period of 74 years right um pre, uh, from january 1st 1950 to march 2024 what means that this chart basically covers some of the worst times in the stock market uh, like um, um, Black Monday uh, in 1987 or the tech wreck uh, in the early 2000s and, of course, the global crisis uh, of uh, 2008. Uh, we see that even when the markets are sitting near all-time highs, many investors still cannot help but feel uh, a bit uneasy about putting their money to work. And uh, in a way, they uh, make a decision to remain in cash and wait for some large correction before they invest. And uh, oftentimes, a significant uh, correction never comes. And uh, that means that it's leaving the investor with the regret of missing out uh, on investment returns. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those are some of the most common mis mistakes we see every day, like people waiting for a good opportunity to start investing or even worse, uh, selling off uh, part of their investments at all time highs and then waiting to get back in the market. And they say that in that case, you have to be right not only once, but twice. You have to be right when to sell and when to buy again. So we saw a lot of that, a lot of that in uh, 2020 during the, the yeah, Corona I crash. To see the COVID, yes, everyone yeah. was Thing, uh, you know, and they were withdrawing the money, waiting for W to come, or you know, even uh, uh, um, basically uh, another drop or something like mm. this. But uh, it never came. So um, exactly, I it yeah. right two times and not just one. Yeah, I vividly remember some of the articles from that time, and I remember some investors saying that they sold uh, after a, a ten or fifteen or twenty percent drop, and they forecasted that it's going to be a forty or fifty percent drop, and that it's not going to recover for a couple of years. But I didn't see the the same people uh, uh, writing articles about uh, when did they buy buy back in uh, to the market. So that would be really really interesting. But I don't think uh, for a lot of them it was uh, it was a winning strategy in the end. And even funnier thing when it comes to psychology, people often, when there is such a huge drop, they don't invest because they are scared. So, you know, they're all waiting for this drop to come because they want to buy cheap. But at the end of the day, when the drop comes, especially if it's a bit more significant, they are reluctant to do so because then the psychology plays games. You know, as we say, emotions are the worst enemy of investing and we tend to always forget it. Yeah, that's what we mentioned earlier. Like you have the the fear and greed on the uh, different uh, uh, different parts of the in investment psychological spectrum. So the same goes as for all time highs. We we never know uh, are they going to keep going or not. Uh, the same can be applied to market correction. So we don't know if a market correction is going to be uh, ten percent, fifteen percent, or more. So the best strategy, as always, is to in invest for the long term, no matter no matter what. Yes, so let's actually have a look at uh, how frequent are market corrections following all-time highs. 
yeah i mean uh, here we can um, we can see for uh, the data for uh, yeah, all time highs and what is the probability that one year out three years out or five years out there's going to be a market correction of more than than 10% uh, for the american s&p uh, index and we can see that uh, if we invest at all time highs and uh, wait one year to see to see the results there's only a 9% probability that the market is going to be down 10% or more from from that point but as soon as we start to go into not even the long term territory but uh, like short to mid term territory 3 to 5 years uh, that probability uh, goes substantially down so we can see that if we invested at all time highs and uh, invested only for 3 years there's only a 2% probability that the markets are going to be uh, in a correction that's 10% or more or 0% if uh, we invested for at least five years. So, uh, yeah, I think that the data is, is very clear on this one. It says the same thing. Uh, the, the longer you invest, uh, the, the probability of um, uh, having bad results is, is greatly diminished. I think this is, a, in a way, very important chart for people to remember when they read all the different headlines, you know, uh, in a way predicting really bad times, uh, always uh, predicting some kind of uh, huge drop uh, in the markets and stuff like that. Um, we tend to read negative stuff much more than uh, we do positive stuff, and this is why also we are being served much more negative information than a uh, positive one. But uh, as you said, you know, uh, this kind of data uh, are inevitably showing us that, uh, you know, uh, if we invest long term, uh, the corrections or uh, timing the markets and thinking when the correction will come is not something that we need to worry about. Yeah, that was a really good point, uh, Tamara, about the psychology of it all that uh, comes back from um, the, the the old days of humanity, the evolutionary psychology. It made more sense to be uh, risk averse. Uh, so that's why most of the news these days are portrayed in a negative way, because people click on those kind of news way more. So I think we it's can all... all the uh, bites, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, also the clickbaits, but uh, even if it's portrayed in, a, in, a, in an objective way, uh, there, there's a lot more news about market drops and uh, uh, virtually zero news about when, when markets are doing well. And that's most of the time. So that's not, not, not interesting to people for, for some reason. So uh, yeah, we just have to look, look at the data and uh, make our decisions based on that. Yes, for us who follow a little bit more uh, this kind of trends and uh, basically how the media also covers it, uh, you, you see that either it's bad or we are expecting the bad. <laughs> you know, mm. uh, it's never going to be anything good. So uh, it's just a good thing to keep that in mind when reading all this news and when actually uh, thinking how this uh, information um, in a way affects us. And especially when it comes to investing and the way uh, we think about, you know, maybe timing a little bit better or not timing if we uh, are there for a long run. Uh, as I said, I don't think uh, that's something we really need to uh, worry about. So here are a few uh, key takeaways. Uh, Tony, if you want, you can... <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the first one ties in uh, really well to the to the previous chart. Uh, it's it's very simple. So if we just uh, uh, look at one year out from investing at uh, all time highs, uh, market corrections greater than ten percent have only occurred at nine percent of the cases. And as we extend the time horizon, the probability uh, significantly drops. So uh, for uh, even uh, three, five, or ten-year uh, horizons, it's uh, almost negligible. So uh, the moral of the story is uh, again: uh, if if we invest for uh, a longer period of time, the the risk uh, significantly goes down. So uh, being a long-term investor, I think, makes sense for for most people, and uh, it's the best way to to control risk, of course, with uh, diversification as as the primary tool uh, when when starting investing. Also on this uh, next slide, there will be uh, another thing that uh, you and I often <laughs> uh, 
basically uh, talk about when we uh, talk about uh, strategies and uh, timing. And that's, uh, of course, the dollar cost averaging in case that's uh, you cannot decide to put a larger sum at once. Uh, because exactly because of this um, kind of feeling that you need to time a bit better than uh, in a way a good uh, solution is uh, dollar cost averaging or uh, basically breaking down the sum into uh, a few payments yeah exactly i mean for most people it usually makes sense to dollar cost average anyway uh, because uh, yeah most of us make uh, either the same amount of money every month or roughly the same amount of money every month. So from a practical standpoint, it's, it's also uh, a good idea. But also when starting investing, if we already uh, have a certain sum that we saved up, uh, yeah, that there is there is the, ho the whole debate about the lump sum investing or dollar cost averaging. But uh, I would say for most people, do dollar cost averaging is the, the simplest uh, solution and it offers uh, a reduction in, in risk uh, uh, from the start. So even if there's a market correction at the very start, if your dollar cost averaging, it actually doesn't matter. Um, maybe it's counterintuitive, but when you're starting investing, you should uh, really be looking forward to market drops because at that times you you buy uh, you buy investments at a, at a cheaper price. So uh, people don't don't understand that. But uh, yeah, most of the time it's, it's good to see market drops at, at, at the very start of your investing journey. Yes, so uh, it's something, as you said, you should uh, feel happy about if it happens uh, at the beginning of your journey. But uh, literally looking at our clients, uh, mostly it's the combination of lump sum and a dollar cost averaging because uh, either you have some amount of money already saved or uh, sometimes, you know, you get a bonus or you, I don't know, inherit some money or, or something like that. So basically it's a combination of the two. As you said, most of the people and the best way also to create a healthy habit is to put aside a certain amount of money every single month. And this way, basically, uh, you know, start saving and investing uh, for the better future. And then when there is something more coming your way, then you can always uh, invest the lump sum as well. Um, and as we as we saw in the uh, from this chart and basically this presentation, it doesn't really uh, make a big difference whether uh, you invest at all-time highs or not. Uh, also, as we said, um, there is no really way of knowing what lies ahead uh, in the near future. So um, often predictions um, are not uh, exactly what happens on the markets and how markets react. So uh, it's a good thing to keep that in mind. Um, and we saw that the history tells us that the stocks and uh, will eventually uh, tend to move uh, higher uh, over the long term uh, as the economy is always going further and uh, it's uh, the world is developing. So um, that's one thing that we know for sure uh, that's going to happen also in the future. So uh, yeah. For, for, yeah, then this new high is basically uh, the whole point uh, of this webinar was to discuss these highs and if we need to be scared of them, but they are basically normal occurrence. They don't mean uh, that there is something really extraordinary happening on the markets. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as we said a couple of times uh, today, we really don't know what can we expect in, in the next month or the next few months or even the next few years not even the, the financial analysts of the biggest companies in the world can predict it as, as we saw in recent years. So not even uh, you and me, uh, Tamara, unfortunately, we cannot predict that stuff. So the only sensible no thing ball. is no crystal ball. <laughs> no, no crystal ball. Yeah. Uh, uh, at least not, uh, not a very well working one. Uh, yes. But yeah, in, in any case, um, yeah, I think the most sensible thing is, is to invest for the long term, no matter if we are uh, in the all time high territory as we are right now, or if the market is in a correction, if we just keep an outlook for, for the long term, we're, we're going to be okay. Yes, I, I think the main point is it's okay to feel like that 
because, you know, uh, psychologically it's normal that we think, oh, now we are going to buy um, th- these shares at very high price. But at the end of the day, uh, we see the data and data uh, don't lie. So um, this is something that in a way we can then rationally think about and uh, we often say uh, automatization uh, in the in finances, which means exactly this: sending the same amount of money every month, not thinking whether the markets are at all-time highs or uh, they dropped. Uh, it's just going to give us a peace of mind, uh, and uh, we can go ahead and enjoy our lives and uh, do stuff that we like and let our money work, no matter uh, what happens in the markets. Exactly. I mean, uh, I know for myself personally, I don't uh, really care what the market is at right now. My views are long term. I, I still invest, uh, if, even though the markets are uh, are uh, higher than they were a year ago. It doesn't doesn't make any difference for me personally. Yes, same here. And uh, sometimes, you know, when the market actually drops, I feel like I'm tr- because I'm all invested, I'm searching for extra money to find it to actually invest more. But often it's tough because uh, if you invest uh, all the time and you try to be completely invested, then you don't uh, necessarily have extras. But if they come your way, then uh, definitely uh, at times like that, it's good to chip in a little bit more if mm. you have on the side. Exactly. I don't think it's a good strategy to sit on cash and to wait for market drops. But if we are in the opportunity that we already have some some extra uh, cash to spare on when uh, when there's a market correction, I would say wh- why not? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but just don't don't stop also investing when the the market is high as as it is right now. Yes. Well, I think we sum it up uh, pretty well, Tony, and we I think discuss everything that we plan to. I hope uh, we. Uh, in a way, uh, explain this all uh, all time highs uh, problem <laughs> in a very simple way, and uh, we motivated you to basically um, think in the long run uh, what you can uh, achieve by uh, basically investing uh, without thinking uh, how the markets are doing at the moment. Yeah, I really hope that our viewers and listeners uh, got something uh, out of this. Uh, so, yeah, th- thanks again for inviting me. And uh, uh, I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm going to see you another time in another webinar. Yes, looking forward to discussing some new topics with you, Tony. Uh, have a nice day, everybody. If you haven't done so, please uh, follow us uh, and subscribe to our social media and uh, YouTube channel, Phoenix International. And we Hope to hear from you about the topics that you would like us to discuss in the future. Have a nice day. Thanks, Tony. Bye. Bye.